Instagram is rolling out new features aimed at making the social media app safer for teens. This includes a new opt-in feature that'll prompt teens to take a break. Parents will also be able to see how much time their children are spending on the app. This as Instagram CEO Adam Masseri is set to testify before Congress tomorrow to respond to questions about the app's impact on younger users. For more on this, let's bring in tech analyst Carmi Levy and Laura Devlin psychological associate at Beaches Therapy. Thanks to you both. Uh, Carmi, I'll start with you. What do you make of the timing of this announcement? <laughs> Absolutely not coincidental. It's designed mm. to divert attention away from uh, Mr. Masseri's testimony tomorrow uh, in front of Congress. Basically what Meta, the company that owns Instagram, formerly Facebook, is trying to do is, to, is, is have us focus on what they're doing, the positive, the new features, uh, which will hopefully suck some of the oxygen out of the room so we'll pay less attention to the grilling that he's about to get. Uh, from lawmakers in the U.S. We, we, we've seen this happen before. Facebook as a company, whatever they're called today, this is their game plan. They always divert attention, and they're clearly doing it again. And what will these lawmakers be armed with, Laura? What sort of impacts do we know social media is having on teenagers? Well, I absolutely think that these laws, lawmakers are going to have a lot to speak about when it comes to teen mental health. I mean, we're seeing it in clinical practice, and the research shows that Teens that use social media have higher levels of depression and anxiety. They tend to have lower self-esteem and more struggles with body image. So it really is quite concerning what's showing up in the research. So, Carmi, let's talk about some of the new features here. Uh, one of them is this opt-in model. Is that sort of flawed? Would an opt-out model make more sense? It absolutely would. You know, here, essentially, you're putting in a new feature and then you're not turning it on and you're relying on your hundreds of millions of users, in fact, more than a billion on Instagram, to actually flip it on for you. And we've seen this before. That simply isn't going to happen. When's the last time that any of us went into our settings to roll up our sleeves and activate these features? Uh, mm -hmm. Either it's turned on by default or the usage numbers will be tremendously low. Uh, again, there's history here uh, and Facebook has a history of introducing Introducing features with great fanfare, but then ensuring that they get buried so deep and they're turned off by default that they literally never see the light of day for the vast majority of their users. Uh, Carmi, how would you characterize U.S. Congress's efforts here? I mean, social media has been around for quite some time. Is now the time for accountability on this? Well, I mean, it's long overdue, but it, sometimes it feels like a dog and pony show. It's it's yet another round. This is Mr. Masseri's first round in front of lawmakers, but certainly every other major Silicon Valley, big tech, big social uh, leader has been trotted out in front of various lawmakers over the last year and a half to two years. Uh, and it always ends up in the same place uh, with watered down laws that take years too long to see the light of day. And of course, by then, the, 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 the line of scrimmage essentially has moved forward. The, the, the legislation will always lag where technology is, and we're always going to have this huge gap where tech companies run far ahead of laws that are designed to curb those extremes of behavior that cause this kind of damage that Laura is talking about. Mm. Um, Laura, I want to ask you about you know, your experience and your practice and what you think uh, some of these teenagers really need to see happen here. Well, we're certainly seeing large, you know, an epidemic, if you will, uh, of anxiety and depression, especially working with, I would say, teenage girls, but not only teenage girls, worrying about body image. And like I said, the research does show that we see higher levels of these issues in teens that consume a lot of social media. And teens do consume a lot of social media. It's a very social time in all of our lives. And, you know, just like we would have done if we had the technology, we want to be social. We want to develop peer relationships. That's really, really normal. But the problem is now these kids are, have access to tools we never did that expose them to far more than we ever have. So the social comparison game, the FOMO, the feeling that they cannot live up to the expectations that are shown on social media is really damaging their emotional health. And there's that instant digital data that these apps get, right? What we're looking at, what we're clicking on, what we're swiping on, Laura. How addictive are these social media apps? Well, they're really addictive. I mean, they are they are accessing our most one of our most powerful instincts, which is to socialize, to connect, and to belong. And teens are desperate to belong, right? It's a time of transition. It's a time of great growth where they're trying to move away from the family system and to find their own sort of belonging with their peer group, which is really normal and healthy. But the problem is the means of doing that over social media can be really, really problematic. They can give teens like a really distorted view of reality and those algorithms that keep pushing the content that they click on more and more of the same, more 
perfect curated images, for example, can really damage their perspective of reality and their, their perspective on themselves. And we see that in clinical practice showing up and we see it in the research showing up as well. Uh, Carmi, you know, I want to remind people, this is essentially a business, right? Instagram is still a business. And I heard an analyst say today, uh, if you don't pay for the product, you are the product. And that's what we are becoming essentially in these types of apps. Uh, what needs to happen for giants like um, Meta and Instagram really to take additional responsibility here? You need legislation that forces them to stop just promising that they're going to clean up their act, but actually force them to do so. And if they don't, uh, then there will be consequences, uh, meaningful fiscal consequences that flow right to the bottom line. Because right now, Mr. Masseri, I expect him to make all sorts of promises tomorrow about how they're going to clean up their act, how they're going to improve things, the kinds of changes they're going to make to improve teen mental health. Well, but there's no law that compels the company to actually follow through on that. There's no consequence if they don't. So, you know, you know, we need better laws. We need better accountability because essentially to clean up its act will affect its profitability. Investors won't go for that. But if there's a law in place that compels them to do so, they'll have no choice. Is there a personal responsibility in cleaning up our act, Laura? I know some people talk about deleting these apps on their phones and they just feel better overall. Can we all find a way to do that if that's the issue? I mean, I think a little bit of what the cigarette companies, when you talk about per, like the social responsibility, and I, I agree with what Carmi's saying there about there needs to be some action from governments likely to support the change, because I don't think individual users, especially children or teens that are in the stage of development that they are, have necessarily the self-regulation or self-control to be able to make those important changes. But if we can create structures in society to help support them making healthy choices, and of course that happens in the home as well with parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to ask you more about that. Uh, Laura, what can parents do in situations like this where they're witnessing their children getting addicted to social media? Yeah, I mean, I've spoken to so many parents over the years that are so worried about this. And I think one of the most key things that we can do as parents is communicate to our kids. We have to work really hard not to come across like we're lecturing or judging because we all know that kids tune that out. But if you can try to reason with kids and give them the facts, so for example, saying, Anxiety and depression is higher in kids that spend a lot of time on these apps. So, you know, how do you think that's affecting you? Can we talk about how to limit that? Can we help you understand it differently? You can help mediate the effect of this this app on on your kids. It's hard for parents; they often feel like they can't get a get a connection with their with their kids. But if you can keep trying, you might find that you're really able to get a dialogue going about it. Uh, we've heard from Facebook defending itself in front of U.S. Congress. Carmi, what do you anticipate Instagram's position will be? Instagram's position will be that they're doing everything they can to mitigate a very clear and present danger to teens today. Uh, they'll trot out all the tools, not only that they're proposing to roll out this month, but what they have planned for next year. They're almost getting ahead of themselves, that there's going to be a roadmap of new features, a hub for parents, more limitations on strangers at reaching out to their kids, things like that. Um, and then they'll essentially try to play the role of concerns with public corporate citizen. Uh, but we, we've seen this game play out before. We have seen uh, Facebook and, and other sort of subsidiaries of this company make those promises previously. I wouldn't uh, hold them to that. I wouldn't uh, take what they say at face value. I take it with a great degree of cynicism because uh, Zuckerberg and company have been making promises for the better part of the decade. Uh, when's the last time they actually followed through and effected true change? This is just going to be more of the same. A great conversation. Carmi and Laura, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it.